Hello and thanks for joining me. I'm in the workshop today and I've got the Harley up on the workbench because I'm fitting a new battery. The reason that I'm making this video is that the old battery that I've just taken off is the original battery that came with the bike when it was sold. It's dated February 2008, which means that that battery has lasted 13 years. So I thought it might be useful to just do a short video about how I maintain batteries and how I test the, the batteries because I must be doing something right to have made that uh, battery last for 13 years. Also, I'll uh, video fitting the new battery on the bike because if you've never removed and fitted uh, a battery fr from your bike, um, you might find that useful and helpful, particularly in terms of disabling the alarm and what have you when you are removing the battery. So let me show you what I uh, use for battery maintenance and battery care. I'll take you over to the workbench. So here's my new battery. I can't show you the old one because I took it down to the dealer when I bought this new one and left it with them to dispose of in an environmentally friendly way. Um, but I can show you the, the new one. They're identical, the, the batteries. And you can see from the, the date on this one, um, uh, 21 it's brand new it's actually only just arrived in the dealer yesterday so it's a brand new, new battery so um, th there's a couple of way of testing batteries um, you can use a, a multimeter but I've got this little battery tester which uh, is just a convenient way of doing things this was quite a cheap thing I got it um, at a bike show I, I, I believe and it was just a couple of quid but what you do is you connect this up to your uh, battery uh, terminals and it just gives you a reading lights up now I don't know if you can see this because of the lights in here but that's lit up to just below the line there which is 12.6 volts which shows that the battery is fully charged so if it were one light below that's the that's the green light if it was one light below that which is the amber light then that would say that it's it's partly charged of it would just lit up the bottom one the red one um, then that showed that it's it's very low, 11 and a half volts or, or less. You can use this tester as well to test the charging function on the bike. So with the battery on the bike and the engine running, the battery should be charging and then it should light up the lights above this line here to show you that it's charging okay. So if the next light up, which is uh, this one here, lights up, that uh, should come on at 13 0.2 volts and that shows that the system is charging okay if the uh, the one higher above that then it's that's charging really a bit high and uh, if it's charging uh, if it's on the red light then it's way too high which uh, suggests that the regulator on your bike is faulty so just um, disconnect this um, and that just shows you the the state of the battery in terms of the charge but of course one problem that you have is if the battery is getting quite old it may be um, showing there just uh, that it's holding a charge on that relatively low drain but once you uh, try and start the bike with it which is putting a very heavy load on it then it can't cope with that so what you need for that kind of testing is a, a load tester and I have a a load tester here. Hang on, I'll move my camera because that's not showing very well. So as I was saying, um, if you want to test the battery under load, which you really need to do to make sure that the battery is still functioning properly, then you need a load test like this. Now, they're not very expensive. This is a US Pro one, which is not, not a very particularly expensive brand. I'm not going to run it on this battery because it's a brand new battery and I know it's good, so I don't want to stress the battery out with it. But essentially what you do is you connect the two uh, crocodile clips here to the terminals on the battery and then you that will immediately give you a reading in terms of the voltage of the the battery um, in the same way as I've just tested with that other little battery tester to make sure that it's it's holding the right voltage but then you press this button that I've got my thumb over down here and you press and hold that for 10 seconds and the needle then should come across into the 
green zone here. Now where you take a reading depends on the, the size of your battery. So you need to know the amp hours of your, your battery in order to know which of these uh, scales to read. But it needs to be in the green zone. If it's not in the green zone when it's uh, under load, which it, which it is when you press that button, then you know then that that, that battery is struggling and it's time to get a new battery. And that's exactly what I did with my own battery. I'd had a couple of times where I was trying to start the bike and it was struggling a little bit. I could just tell it was struggling to turn the bike over. So I put it on this tester and that showed me that the time had come eventually after just under 13 years to replace it. So that begs the question then, uh, what, what, what have I done to keep the battery lasting for so long? And the answer is, that I keep it on a battery tender all the time. So if I'm not riding the bike and it's parked up in the garage, it's on a battery tender. Now I've got several bikes, you've probably noticed I've got se several bikes and so I have several different battery tenders. But the one that I put on my Harley is actually the oldest one that I've got. I bought this for, I think it was for the, the Harley before the last one. So I've had this one quite a while. I think I bought it in about 1995, which makes it, what, uh, 25, 20, well, 26 years old. Um, it's a Zodiac one, is this? And I think, you know, by the standards of modern uh, trickle chargers, it's, um, it's probably, you know, not, not very sophisticated, but it obviously does the job. So I always just leave the Harley on that. So when I finish riding the bike, I bring it to the garage, park it up, and I always connect it to the trickle charger, and it just stays on the trickle charger till next time I want to ride it when I disconnect it uh, to ride it away. And that's the only thing that I can attribute the long life of the battery to, that it's been looked after because it's been on one of these battery tenders. Because, of course, you understand these battery tenders, they're not just battery chargers, they're not just charging the battery, but they're looking after the health of the battery as well. Um, and clearly, this little toy does its job. So that's what I've been doing to look after the battery. Let's get this new one fitted on the bike. I'm really making this video, at least this, this part of the video, um, for the benefit of anybody who um, uh, is new to Harley Davidson. They maybe just got the, the bike recently and uh, they're not familiar with um, where the battery is, how it's connected, how you can connect and disconnect the battery uh, you know, with the alarm on without having problems with the alarm. So this is the battery box here, which is just under the seat. So I, it's not totally necessary, but um, I find it's just easier to remove the seat and then you can get to the battery box um, easily. Uh, you'll see when I put it back on, the battery box is just secured with one, secu uh, one screw at the bottom here. It's a crosshead screw. Take that out, you rock it up. There's a couple of uh, little uh, bits on the top there where, where the battery box locates and then you can pull it off. And then the battery itself is, uh, is held in with this strap. Now in terms of the wiring to the battery, um, I've got two wires, so these are the, the main wires which, um, which go into the bike and then these smaller ones that I've got, that's the lead for my battery tender which, is, which I just connect on there as well, which means then um, I can just plug the battery tender in when I put the bike in the garage and it goes straight to the, the battery. So I'm going to get the battery and put it back in here and reconnect it and then I'll show you, I'll take you around the other side of the bike and show you what to do about the alarm. So one thing you've obviously got to be careful about when you are either fitting or removing the battery is not to short the terminals on anything, you know, not to short the, the life terminal. So that's the, that's the battery slid into the battery box and if I just fasten this rubber strap round, just uh, clips around the side here. That's what secures the battery in place. Whoops. That's what secures the battery in place. So um, it's always good practice to disconnect the uh, earth terminal first uh, and then when you're reconnecting the battery, reconnect the earth terminal last. So I'll um, connect the live terminal. So I've got the, the live terminal that goes to the bike and then I've got the um, the lead here that goes to the battery tender. So I'll put that in. Oh, 
before I before I tighten that up actually I'll just put this little cover on because this again just covers up that live terminal to um, prevent you from shorting it out on the battery cover or anything else. I have had that problem in the past on a, on a different uh, Harley where I found that um, the live terminal was shorting out against the metal battery box and uh, flattening the battery. Okay, so there's, you could either use a, uh, I think it's a 10mm, yes yeah, a 10mm, that looks a bit that on there, or you can use a, a crosshead. Just get a 10mm socket on there. Clearly you don't need to tighten this up too much, in fact, you definitely don't want to tighten it up too much, because there's danger of stripping that thread. And then just feed that cover in there so that protects the terminal. Um, this wire has to stretch around the, the front here, just the way I've wired up my uh, battery tender. And obviously it's not so important um, covering the earth terminal because it's earth, so it can't earth. Okay, so that's my battery securely back on and fastened up. Everything's good there. I'll put the battery cover back on. So the, the battery cover is metal, but you can see on mine, I've covered it in this leather. That's just my own leather work. Um, I'm, a, I'm a leather worker. It's one of the things I enjoy doing. Um, and so uh, this is actually the, the cover for the other side. I've put, put this um, on here, because I'm going to go around put on that on the other side. This is the battery box and you can see I've it's the metal battery box but what I've done is I've put this this uh, leather cover over it so I think that's quite nice it looks like a little leather box on the side but as I say that's just some of the custom work that I do. Now if you look inside um, hopefully you can see for showing the camera here and here there and there there are the location holes for these notches up here so you need to first of all make sure that it's seated at the top on those which is just, that's it, feel when it's clicked into place and then it should just push down into, into place on the bike and you can then fit the screw um, in the bottom and again you really don't need to over tighten that right, that's, that's the battery cover back on Right, I'm going to take the uh, camera around the other side and then I can show you um, how to deal with the alarm when you are removing the battery. So here I am around the left hand side of the bike and this is the, the fuse box. Um, the uh, fuse box cover uh, just literally just pulls off, it's got these toggles here to these rubber grommets. You, you just give it a good pull and it comes off. And you see you've got the fuse boxes here but what I've got in my hand is the, the main fuse which is a big 40 amp fuse and you need to remove that before you remove the battery but if you either try to try sorry if you try to either remove the battery or the fuse without disabling the alarm then the alarm goes off and all hell is let loose so what you need to do is switch the ignition on and if I can show you here in the bike I've actually got the ignition switch to the on position there so you switch the ignition on with the key fob on you or on the bike so that um, that deactivates the alarm once you've deactivated the alarm then you leave the ignition on and you pull that fuse and once you've pulled that fuse then you can remove the battery so now I've put the battery back on I'm reversing the process so the battery is refitted so now I want to refit this fuse into the fuse holder and you can probably hear straight away there because the ignition's on, the fuel pump primed and the lights have come on and everything. So now we're all good, live again. So now I can press this cover back on and you see it just presses on like that and you can see that, well there's a bit of dirt there, that needs a wash. Um, that's just leather cover which I've put over there uh, for myself. But now having um, done that, I can switch off the ignition, which I've just done. And that's it, we're all sorted. So I will just refit the seat on the bike and we should be good to go with a brand new battery and hopefully that will see me for the next 13 years.